Matthew chapter 20, verse 17. And Jesus going up to Jerusalem. And the question is, why did he go up to Jerusalem? Why is he always going up to Jerusalem? Jerusalem is a mountain. And that's a very good question for someone to ask who's, who's new in the Bible, newly saved. I mean, that, that always comes up. Goes up to Jerusalem. It's a mountain. Took the 12 disciples with him. Peter, James, John, Judas is with them. Apart in the way. So they're, they're out of the way. They're secluded. And said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem. The Son of Man shall be betrayed. There's Judas. Unto the chief priests, that's the Jewish, and unto the scribes, the Jewish. They will turn Jesus over to the Roman government. And they shall condemn him to death, the death felony. And shall deliver him to the Gentiles. All right, there's the Gentiles. This is not a Gentile book. This is a Jewish book with a Jewish king to come. They will mock him. Make fun of him, rank on him. Oh, hell, Jesus, King of the Jews. To be scourged, that's to be whipped, beaten, Isaiah 53. And to crucify him, the means of death. See, Jesus is telling us prophecy. And what's going to happen? And the third day he shall rise again. There is the gospel. Now, we don't have time tonight to look at it. But when you see Jesus telling his disciples about his suffering, his death, his burial, resurrection, immediately something happens. Who's the greatest? Can my son sit the left hand and the right hand? And this is why they don't get it. This is why they're not waiting at the empty tomb because every time Jesus mentions the gospel, the suffering, the death, and the burial, resurrection, they got their minds elsewhere. And it's sad because had they listened, had they paid attention, they would have been there at the tomb. He came, then came, excuse me, then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children and her son, James and John, worshiping him and desiring a thing of him. Lord, you know, I got a request. He said unto him, What will thou? I got to make the screen bigger. My eyes are. <laughs> All right, so. He says, New computer. So they come to him. We got a request. What will thou? She says unto him, Grant that my two sons, James and John, may sit one on the right hand and the other on the left in thy kingdom. So in the kingdom of the millennial kingdom, when Jesus is seated as the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the king of the Jews, Zebedee's wife, the mother of James and John says, Jesus, I request for James and John to sit on your right hand and your left hand. Now, earlier in Matthew, or later in Matthew, it's coming up. He's going to tell the disciples, or the gospel, somewhere. They're going to be seated on 12 thrones, judging the nation of Israel. They will have thrones. But the request here, I want to be on the left, and I want to be on the right of you. But Jesus answered and said, ye know not what ye ask. Are you able to drink the cup, we'll talk about that in a moment, that I shall drink of? And to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. They say, unto we are able. And he saith unto them, Jesus, ye shall drink indeed of my cup. 
and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. And remember, baptism is not always water. Baptism is death, burial, and resurrection. He's telling the disciples what he just told them. I'm going to die. I'm going to be buried. I'm coming back up. Well, so are you guys. And James and John has been killed. They are buried. And at the rapture, they're coming up. That's the other form of baptism besides water. When you take a man, you baptize in the water, you show, hey, I'm dying to self. What do you do with a dead body? You bury it. And in the resurrection, the new, the new creature, the new birth, you come out of that water. But to sit on my right hand, on my left hand, is not mine to give. Now look what Jesus just said. Now, in Matthew or Mark, Luke or John, the four gospels, he will tell the disciples, has already told them, you will sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. I don't know if they'll have a throne in each territory in Israel, but that's what it is. But he says, to sit in my right and my left is not mine to give, which means in the millennium, the kingdom of David given to Jesus, there will be a man sitting to the left and to the right of Jesus. And if you would take the transfiguration where there was Moses and Elijah, when Jesus dies on the cross, there's one to the left and there's one to the right. Let one of them didn't get saved, one got saved. Now, I'm not going to profess to know who these are, but if it's Moses and Elijah, the law and the prophets, and there is Jesus in the middle because he fulfilled both, is a possibility. I will not lay or make an oath on who it is, but Jesus said there is a place on the right and there's a place on the left. Get that straight. But it shall be given unto them, what? The left and the right spot, for whom is prepared of my Father. So there is a position with Jesus on his left hand and his right hand. Now you cannot say the Christian, because the Christian is said to be seated with Jesus. Now we come back to this cup. And Luke 22 Luke 22, I'll show you a Pharisee teaching of great men of the faith today. Jesus is in the garden. He said, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Mark 14. Mark 14, 36. And you can write, John, write down John 18, 11, but we'll look at Mark 14, 36. He's in the garden. I hope if I get the scripture right. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me, nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou will. All right, there are many men. I think, I think John R. Rice is one of them. They're saying that Jesus is asking the Father not to die. That's not the case. Jesus went to the cross willingly to die. It's not death. Never was death. Because you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you. Now there is a good cup. Psalms. 75a. No. 75a. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup. 
The wine is red, is full of mixture, poured out of the same. But the dregs, that's the bottom, the settlement. The, all the wicked of the earth shall wring them out and drink. That's not a good. That's a bad. And I looked at, well, take that. One. That's a bad. That's judgment. We'll look at the good afterwards. I looked at the one. That's judgment of God. The wicked. The wicked. Isaiah 51. Isaiah 51. And a little backwards here. Isaiah 51, 17. Awake, wake, O stand Jerusalem, which has drunk at the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury. Thou hast drunken the dregs, that's the settlement of the cup, of trembling and wrung them out. Verse 22. Thus save the Lord and thy God that pleases the cause of his people Israel. Behold, I have taken out of thy hand a cup of trembling, even the dregs of the cup of my fury. Thou shalt no more drink it again. Jeremiah 25. Jeremiah 25. And we're not looking up all the references, just really what I think is the major one. Jeremiah 25, 15. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel unto me, take me the wine cup of his fury at my hand and cause all the nations, including America, to whom I send thee to drink it. 28. 25, 28. And it shall be, if they refuse to take the cup at the uh, hand to drink, thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, ye shall certainly drink. Revelation 14. Revelation 14. 10. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture in the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. 1619. 1619. The great city was divided into three parts, and the city of the nations fell, and the great Babylon came to remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. 17, 6, I hope, 6. I saw a woman drunken with the blood of the saints and the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. When I saw her, I wondered at a great abnegation, and somewhere there's a cup. Oh, there, no. There's a cup there somewhere. All right, John. 3, 36. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding on him. That cup that Jesus asked the Father, that's sin. That's going to hell. So the cup that passes on to Jesus when Jerusalem went dark, and I believe that Jerusalem went dark and God turned his back when Jesus became sin. The serpent that Moses lifted up in the wilderness. And that moment when Jesus became sin personified. That's where every single sin, the cup, that cup was filled with adulteries, murders, Lying, stealing, cheating, fornication, sodomy, everything. All the sin from Adam to the last man on this earth was in that cup. And that's the moment that Jesus drinks that cup, becomes sin, and goes into hell. That's what Jesus said to the Father, please. Father, you, you don't understand how bad sin is. We, you, you don't know how, God does not know how wicked sin is because God never sinned. Now, Jesus Christ, 33 and a half years old, sinless perfection, God manifested in the flesh. He is going to become 
all sin of all men. Is there a sin you have not create you have not done in your life? Well, Jesus Christ suffered for that sin and all your sins. That's the cup. That's the cup when you reject God and you reject his commandments and you reject his means of salvation, whatever dispensation you were living in. And what happens is when you go into hell, you drink your own sin. That's when sin became real to Jesus. He hanging around with 12 men who sinned. Not one was perfect in the group, but Jesus. He's like, I can't believe the fights you're doing. I can't believe the pride. I can't believe the ego. I, ego, the ego. I can't believe what that guy's doing with that woman. I can't believe what, what. Father, I'll die. But can you let that cup? That is gross. You see, what would that be to a human? Find the sewer place of the, the gathering sewage of a place like Los Angeles or New York City or any major metropolitan. Find where that, that sewage is, is collected in Maine from all the places that city and maybe state. Open up the manhill cover and do a swan dive in it. That's what it was like for Jesus to become sin. And he went into hell to cite what people teach. He went into hell, deposit our sins, grabbed the keys of death and hell, walked across the gulf, and no man could walk. Went to Abraham's bosom and said, hello, gentlemen, here I am. Don't forget, John was already there. They talk. Abraham was talking with, with, with uh, the rich man. I mean, if they had the opportunity, can you imagine John the Baptist? He wouldn't shut up. Hey, guess who I just saw? He's coming. Now, there's a good cup. This one just gets Psalms. Psalm 16.5. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance, and in my cup thou maintains thy lot. It's the Lord taking you. The Lord has possessed you. 23.5. I said, there's good cup. I mean, we didn't study them all. Thou preparest a table before me. In the presence of my enemies. There's, there's, you know, the Lord is my shepherd. Thou annoys my head. My head with the oil, my cup runneth over it. That's a blessing from God. Later on in the book of Acts, that is the Holy Spirit. That's not what Jesus is, is that's not what Jesus is praying about in the garden. He's praying the quite opposite. Remember, Satan takes whatever is good of God and twists it. 116 13. 116 13. I will take the cup of salvation. That's the complete opposite. I have taken the cup of salvation. April 25th, 1987. And called upon the name of the Lord. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There's a cup of salvation. And there is the cup. Of wrath of God. And Jesus drank of the cup of the wrath of God. John uh, 336. Hell. That's hell. That we might have the cup of salvation. If we call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. So if you hear somebody say. Well you know Jesus prayed in the garden. You know he didn't want to die. Why would he fear death? 
Didn't we just read in Matthew, I'm going to die and then I'm going to be resurrected in three days? He's like, and some say, you know, with the, with the scripture, he went into hell, went to Abraham's bosom. He had time before the, you know, what did he do during the time that, you know, just hanging out? <laughs> Can't wait the time to roll this door away. Um, Because he told the man, he told the 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 man that, that repented on the cross, he said, "Today thou shalt be with me in paradise." What do you do with the rest of the time? He's already after that. He's already gone into hell, deposited our sins, and the Bible says he preached to the people in hell. I don't think he mind preaching in hell. I don't know if he felt the heat. I don't think he mind dying on the cross. One man got saved. He knew the death would be paid for our sins. It's just that moment that he had to become sin. That's, Father, please, come on, really. I mean, you think about it like this. My daughter worked for a place, and it was sex offenders, criminals. Their minds are not right. Their minds are not straight. Limited staff. What would you think? All right, we're going to put you in there. Oh, you know, I can go out the exit. No, we're going to lock all the doors and all the windows. We're going to push you in there. You're not going to be able to come out until we tell you to come out. You'd be petrified. You'd be begging. You'd be. I don't want to be with that filth. I don't want to be with those sinners. The guy's going to hit me. The guy's going to try to rape me. The guy, and whatever. You want to be there. That's what Jesus felt. So the, the, the thing is, Jesus knows our infirmities. Yeah, he bore them all. Without sinning, but he became our sin. Try to explain that one. 